Hello guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. Without further ado, let's get started. Our main character, Mao Mao, the first time we meet her, she's heading towards a pleasure house in China with some herbs she's procured, and her elderly father warns her about the kidnappers around. At the pleasure house, she's doted upon by the courtesans, and the manager lady even offers her a position to join training, but she quickly leaves. On her way home, she's distracted by a field full of herbs, and being an apothecary, she's very pleased to find so many materials. However, she's surrounded by three sinister-looking men, and before she knows it, Mao Mao is kidnapped. Mao Mao doesn't have a problem adjusting to the palace where she's brought, and she's tasked with being a serving woman to the several concubines of the emperor. She makes a friend named Xiao Lang and learns about a so-called curse that makes the concubines and their children sick. Mao Mao also notices a stunningly handsome man amidst the thousands of eunuchs who are allowed to attend the concubines and learns that the other maids and serving girls are enamored by his devilishly handsome looks. Point one day, there's a commotion in the courtyard, and she finds one concubine named Li Wa slapping another named Gyokuyu. Apparently, both of their children have fallen sick, along with themselves. Li Hua blames her rival for being jealous of her son, while Gyokuyu retorts by saying her daughter is sick as well. Listening to the symptoms, Mao Mao deduces there's no curse, but a poison is at work, and she leaves a note on the concubine's windowsill at night. Li Hua, the haughty concubine, disposes of it without taking so much as a second glance, and within a month, her son dies from poisoning. The stunningly handsome man named Jin Shi calls the serving girls, including Mao Mao, to his office and writes something on a scroll describing her features. She's apprehended as the one who tried to warn the concubines of the poison, and by a massive stroke of luck, she is promoted to Gyokuya's personal maidservants. A group of soldiers suddenly falling ill in an army camp, and the head of the village being apprehended for poisoning them. Meanwhile, Mao Mao finds out she's been given a rather dangerous task. She's to be the food tester for the concubine. Additionally, she feels rather uncomfortable every time Jin Shi approaches her, and the more time she spends in his presence, the more she starts feeling icky because of him. However, she has no difficulty understanding the details and flavors of every food and drink, and she also adds that she's built up a resistance to most kinds of poison. So it seems this job is perfect for her. Jin Shi calls Mao Mao to the courtroom and asks her to find out the ingredients in a box of bauzi buns. Without even having to taste them. She declares that they're laced with something aphrodisiac, and that whoever sent those to Jin Shi might drop by for him later that night. The manager of the palace is reddened in the ears, but he quickly covers that up by switching focus to other important matters at hand. He explains to Mao Mao how the soldiers had fallen sick after eating food cooked by the villagers, and asks for her take on the situation. She explains that since the soldiers were outside, there's a chance they burned some wood or sniffed some flowers, which have rather dangerous properties. For example, the rhododendron flowers found in abundance near the palace have properties that cause nausea and breathing difficulties. The same problems the soldiers encountered. Mao Mao deduced that the soldiers weren't poisoned, but they'd only been unlucky enough to cook in the vicinity of some rather toxic plants. Impressed by Mao Mao's immense knowledge of herbs, poisons, and apothecaries, Jin Shi makes a strange request to her. He asks her to make an aphrodisiac, and she's given complete access to the doctor's ingredient storage. Seeing how Mao Mao might need more cacao, Jin Shi does everything in his power to offer everything the storage has to make sure she's completely satisfied. There's also a strange infatuation that Jin Shi develops towards this young girl, which seems to intensify the more she rejects his advances. However, Mao Mao does manage to prepare the necessary aphrodisiac and prepares chocolate with the remaining cacao. She ends up losing track of time after setting the prepped materials to cool while collecting herbs. When Mao Mao returns. She finds the other attending girls of Gyokuyu on the verge of passing out after tasting the delicacies of chocolate. Mao Mao hands the aphrodisiac to Jin Shi, and before leaving, he brings his face near Mao Mao's neck and whispers something. This seriously creeps her out, but she doesn't have a choice but to complain about it. In the evening, while out on a stroll, a maid servant spots a woman on top of the palace walls and is terrified when that strange person looks at her. It's not revealed who that woman is, but in all probability, that's Li Hua, the other concubine. It had been rumored that Li Hua had lost a lot of weight after being poisoned, and the woman that the maid saw was severely bony and sickly. So it's possible that Li Hua might have been on top of the walls. But the question is, what was she doing there so late at night? Suddenly promoted to lady in waiting for one of the most favored concubines of the emperor, Mama was experiencing immense fortune when she received an added stroke of luck. 
With the ability to taste for poisons without any side effects on herself, she was granted the keys to the palatial apothecary, and now she'd have free reign to create an experiment with drugs as she felt. With multiple issues cropping up, there's a high chance that Mama's skills with poison detection will be needed soon enough, and she'll have to use her skills to cook some new drugs as well. Until then, she needs to dodge Jeanshire's advances and keep doing her thing, the rumor of seeing a ghost dancing on the walls of Eastern Palace at night hits Mao Mao's ears. After talking to Jeanshire and his eunuch, Mao Mao is led to the walls, where she sees concubine Fuyo, who will be bestowed upon a soldier in a few days. Fuyo was a good dancer. However, she made a mistake while performing in front of the emperor, leading to no visits from the emperor. Mama Mama acts that Lady Fudo acts like she has a disease called somnambulance, in which the diseased person acts like a completely different individual at night, having no recollection of their conduct. She also suspects Lady Fuyo was faking the disease by giving an example of a similar case of a lady in a brothel. After presenting her case to Jinshir, she learned that concubine Fuyo was later prohibited from being out of her dwelling until her bestowment. The apothecary discussed her speculations of the sudden onset of Lady's disease with Lady Gyokuyu. Fuyo was in love with her childhood friend, the soldier, and to remain chaste for her love, she purposefully butchered her performance. Judging from the relieved expression of concubine Fuyo upon her departure, Mao Mao's speculations were spot on and the words of the emperor are words from heaven. Anyone who denies them could be beheaded. Due to worsening condition of Lady Liwa, the emperor visited the Jade Pavilion requesting Miyamoto cure his concubine's illness. This episode of the Apothecary Diaries only tells us a little about the Emperor besides that his orders are absolute. Mao Ameo was unwelcome by Lady Lihua's attendants, even when she was following the Emperor's orders, because she was Lady Gyokuyu's attendant. With Jinshir's help, Mao Mao gets access to Lady Lihua and uncovers the cause of her persistent sickness, the poisonous face powder banned for use, after knowing the cause, Concubine Li was lady in waiting, woman in charge of her presentation, was punished with house arrest. Meanwhile, Mama worked hard to develop an elaborate diet and care plan for Lady Liwa. In two months, Lady Liwa recovered enough to walk around the palace. Before returning to Jade Palace, Mama taught Lady Liwa a technique taught by her big sister at the brothel to attract and lure the emperor to her dwelling. Just as Mao Mao predicted, the Emperor's visits to Lady Lihua increased. Mao Mao's day starts with a rumor about the stimulants she created. Her friend informed her that they were used to seduce an eunuch who was famous for hating women. In the next scene of the Apothecary Diary, a new mystery unfolds. A man comes to Mao Mao asking to be healed from a curse. He was going about his normal duties of burning the trash when he came across wooden tablets and burned them as usual. Later, he found a severe rash on his hands as he witnessed the flames change colors. In the next scene, the preparations for the garden party start, with the emperor and all the higher-ups gathering at the court garden to enjoy performances and meals. The emperor was unmarried and had no consorts, thus, he was to take the four highest status concubines. Mao Mao is smart and knows the event will be windy and cold so she prepares orange ginger candy and undercoats to keep warm stones in, so she won't catch a cold. At the event, we learn that Mama's freckles are not real. She uses them to remove herself from attention. She tells Jinshir how she was kidnapped, even with her freckles, leading him to give Mama a promised hairpin. Everything goes according to plan at the garden party until the food is served. As the garden party continues, Mama learns that hairpins have different meanings. The hairpins are used to recruit talented people at parties like these, but they symbolize promise and love. Mao Mao is given a courtesy hairpin Lihaku and Lady Liwa. Due to Mao Mao's hairpin collections, Lady Gyokuyu's attendants suspect she might get angry and act possessively die in the next scene, the lunch is served. And Mao Mao gets to do her favorite job, poison testing. As the soup is served, Mao Mao's expressions change to the feeling of pleasure and ecstasy, leaving observers in awe and imagining how delicious the food might have been. The concubine soup is poisoned. Jinshir and Mao Mao carry out investigations and request to meet young Lady Lishu. They discover that Lady Lishu is allergic to seafood, leading to rashes on her arm. Lady Lishu is allergic to mackerel. Her attendant was responsible for not letting the allergy-triggering food be served. 
Mama warns Li Xu's lady-in-waiting that this mistake can hold her accountable for poisoning the emperor's concubine. This episode of the Apothecary Diaries starts with a flashback of Mama and her grandfather in the girls, collecting medicine. Mao Mao felt uneasy showing up to work without her freckles, so she asked Lady Gyokuyu to keep wearing them. The lady agreed since her lady in attending is in high demand, so it's better to keep Mao Mao's freckles. In the next scene, Gao Shan and Mao Mao examine the bowl used to serve the poisonous soup. They find the imprints of fingertips on the bowl using powder and cotton. The bowl handlers could be identified from areas the bowl was held. A third party who touched the bull's rim is the culprit that poisoned the bull. This person wanted to poison Lady Li Xu. However, her bull was swapped with Lady Gyukuyu's bull, causing their plan to fail, but the mystery remains. Who tried to poison Lady Li Xu? In the next scene, Mao Mao learns a new meaning for hairpins. They can be used as a token to escape the palace temporarily. This means Mao Mao can visit home. She convinced Li Haku to accompany her to her town, and in exchange, he would be treated generously by her sisters at the luxurious brothel, the Verdigris house. She returns home, visits her father, and talks to him until dark. This episode starts with a rushed morning in the apothecary diaries. Mao Mao is taken to the brothel by a young girl, where she saves a wealthy-looking man and a courtesan's life. The next scene plays along smoothly until Mao Mao catches the little girl trying to kill the man at the brothel. To which she discovers that the man is a spoiled son of a rich merchant who would lure courtesans towards him with sweet words and then abandon them after being bored of them. Mao Mao later solves the mystery of the scene. The courtesans used an elaborate plan to murder the merchant's son using two types: alcohol and tobacco. The lighter density alcohol sits on top of higher density alcohol. The courtesan drank the lower density alcohol using a straw, while the man drank both layers of alcohol that reacted with the tobacco. The courtesan drank a small amount of top layer alcohol so she would survive without being suspected of murder. In the next scene, Mao Mao returns to the palace. Jin Shu is upset that she used Li Haku's obligatory pin instead of his hairpin. Jin Shu interprets a different meaning and gets traumatized when Mao Mao tells him she paid Li Haku at night of his dream. This episode of the Apothecary Diaries starts when Jin Shu learns that a higher up bureaucrat. Conan died of an alcohol overdose, and he wants Mama to find the real cause of his death. The bottle of alcohol containing Conan's drink was knocked over and spilled out, so it could not be checked for poison. Mama tasted the same type of alcohol to access Conan's death and found that he drinks a weird mix of sweet and salty alcohol. With further inspection, Mama found the broken alcohol bottle, and it had dried salt deposited on its inner surface, meaning Conan died of a salt overdose. Conan never added salt to his drink because he lost his taste sense due to an illness. Dot in the next scene, a new mystery unfolds. The guards find a food maid's body, and Jinchur wants Mama to find the reality behind her death. Mama's speculations about the maid's death led her to make an odd request to Jinchur. Mama wants to be executed with poison if she is charged with something unexpected. So that's it, guys. Thank you for watching and like and subscribe for part two.